we saw that, the results of the first year, we said, it can't be true. It can't be true. We have to continue one more year to examine more men to see if there had been some kind of bias or something like that, because we really didn't, we didn't dare to believe in the results. For us, the, the real shock was the first couple of years. In fact, we didn't even believe the first study. We put the chemicals on incredibly low concentrations, part per trillion concentrations. We got sex reversal. And we said, no, something wrong. So this doesn't, we, we, we don't believe this. We repeated it the next year, got the same results. In our modern world, we have 85,000 chemicals in commerce, most of which we don't know anything about. We don't know their carcinogenic potential, their reproductive potential, their effect on our immune systems, on our metabolism, and so on. So we need to get busy and start understanding what we're being exposed to because we're all in this massive experiment, if you will. Jesu li kemijske molekule koje su se oko nas pojavile prije 50 godina opasne za našu sposobnost reprodukcije? Mnogi znanstvenici postavljaju takva pitanja. Njihove su discipline različite, proučavanje divlji životinja, biologija, toksikologija, onkologija. Jednoga dana postigli su zaprepašćujući rezultat. Neke kemijske molekule vjerojatno mogu zavarati hormonalni sustav živih bića. To je odvažna i kontroverzna hipoteza koja pobija mnogobrojna znanstvena istraživanja. Ako imaju pravo, treba promisliti o našem načinu života. Ta je zamisao provokativna i na visini postavljenog izazova. In my opinion, the male reproductive health, health problems and the infertility problems that we are facing uh, now are so important that potentially they are as important as uh, global warming. Muškarci u opasnosti. Sve se događa početkom 90-ih godina u sve učilišnoj bolnici u Kopenhagenu. Nils Skakebak, liječnik i znanstvenik, suočen je sa sve većim brojem slučajeva raka testisa ili neplodnosti. Skakebak postavlja pitanje. Radi li se o bolesti muškog reproduktivnog sustava? Zato počinje s obsežnim istraživanjem. U podrumima knjižnice Skakebak marljivo proučava spise koji potječu još od 30-ih godina i pregledava više od 60 istraživanja provedenih u svijetu. I iz toga izlači korisne zaključke. U 50 godina broj spermatozoida u muškaraca pao je 50%. It was certainly not what I expected to be because the, the conclusion of the, of the previous uh, uh, publication had been that there should be no decline in semen quality. So I was very surprised that we found uh, such a significant uh, decline. There were all sorts of controversies. Some people felt we had been using wrong pipettes and uh, Others uh, challenge the statistics, others challenge the methods, the selection of papers and so forth. Razvila se burna rasprava te su napali danskog znanstvenika posumnjavši u njegove kvalitete. Da bi istraživanje bilo valjano, trebalo ga je potvrditi. Skakebak je sve izvore i dokumente proslijedio uglednoj znanstvenici koju je imenovala Američka akademija znanosti. It seemed a big decline. 50% in sperm count in 50 years seemed implausible. If you think about continuing that decline at that rate, it's, it's pretty alarming. So it was important to, uh, to decide whether it was true or not. We made a very systematic analysis of each of the studies that went into this. And this took four months and three people working for four months. Uh, 
I was very surprised that after all that work and we, everything we did, that we should come up with almost exactly the same overall decline that had been published. U Parizu unatoč svemu prevladava skepticizam. Za razliku od različitih materijala kojima se koristio Skakebak, u Parizu je banka sperme s veoma preciznim podacima. On s'est dit, bah, on va analyser nos données, ça portait sur plus de 1300 hommes, si, si je me souviens bien. Et euh, au départ, on partait, nous, avec euh, l'idée qu'il n'y avait pas de modification à la qualité du sperme. Et qu'on allait démontrer que sur 20 ans, euh, dans une ville comme Paris, bah, il n'y avait pas eu de, de changement. C'était un peu notre idée de départ. Paris qui sont donneurs et homogènes à la population. Svi su roditelji bar jednog djeteta. Njihovi savršeno dokumentirani dosjeji čuvaju se u arhivi u banci sperme. Zbog njegove preciznosti na to će se istraživanje pozivati u cijelome svijetu. Njegovi su zaključci alarmantni. U 20 godina pad broja spermatozoida u Parižana približava se broju od 40%, gotovo 2% na godinu. Iako Pierre Joanet u Francuskoj nije imao novca za nastavak svojeg istraživanja, a u ministarstvu su mu rekli da brojenje spermatozoida nije znanost, danske su vlasti mnogo ozbiljnije pristupile problemu. Jer bude li se taj pad nastavio, sposobnost raznožavanja ljudi bit će na kocki. Danci su 1996. godine pokrenuli program proučavanja 400 osoba na godinu. Rezultati nisu baš utješni. Jedan od petorice mladih danaca ima veoma slabu kvalitetu sperme, dovoljno da to utječe na njegovu plodnost. Pogledajte spermu ovog mladog donora usporedbi s uzorkom dobre kvalitete. Spermatozoida ima manje, manje su pokretljivi, neki imaju dvije glave. To je učinjeno, ne samo zbog... There are too few people being born in Denmark, but also it is of concern that something actually hits the human, the humans that we don't control. We don't know what it is that affects us. We can just see that we are affected, and we we cannot control it. The question is, what is the reason behind this poor seeming quality? Zašto je kvaliteta sperme tako loša? Zašto je tako velik porast slučajeva raka testisa? više od 400% u 60 godina. I zašto se javljaju urođene genitalne malformacije kod dječaka, kao što su nespušteni testisi. Nils Kakebak misli da su ta tri fenomena povezana. Njegovo se mišljenje temelji na najalarmantnijem otkriću. U kanceroznim tumorima jajnika odraslih osoba pronašao je stanice slične stanicama fetusa. kao da je nešto zaustavilo njihov razvoj u majčinoj utrobi. To znači da bi mogla postojati veza između događaja pri rođenju i onih u odrasloj dobi. In Danish you use the term the coin fell, which means that suddenly you can see the broader picture and with the broader picture we could see was that testicular cancer, male infertility, undescended testes and also some disorders of sexual development, uh, we call it hyperspadias, may all have a common origin in fetal life. Rak, smanjenje broja spermatozoida i genitalne malformacije, vjerojatno su dakle povezani sa sindromom koji Skakebak naziva TDS, testikularni disgenetički sindrom. Richard Sharp već 30 godina surađuje sa Skakebakom kako bi razradili teoriju o TDS-u. Sharp ustrajava na važnosti podrijetla toga sindroma, fetalnom razdoblju i presudnoj ulozi hormona tijekom toga razdoblja. The most important event in a male's life occurs in fetal life. I think it's not widely appreciated that each fetus in humans is, is really programmed to become a female. So that's what we call the setup program. Everyone will become a female. 
So to become a male, you've got to modify that setup program. And the first event is to form a testis. And so that's what our Y chromosome results in the formation of a testis. So that's the, the key event. But in fact, that still doesn't make you a male. So what makes you become a male is when those testes make hormones. Um, and so the most important is testosterone. It's its production by the fetus, which essentially completely modifies the setup program. But I think the other thing that people need to think about is the fact that because it's something that has to bring about change, then it's, if you like, it's also risky because things could go wrong with it. So we need to be extra specially cautious about factors that may be acting in pregnancy. Because if factors cause an effect in pregnancy and affect the fetus, then that's likely to be an irreversible change. U povijesti medicine postoji tragičan primjer izlaganja fetu sa vanjskim čimbenicima. Dietil stilbestrol, koji se od 50-ih do 80-ih godina naveliko propisivao, ženski je sintetski hormon, to jest kemijski estrogen. Prodavali su ga kao čudotvorni lijek za koji se smatralo da sprečava spontani pobačaj, te ga je primilo više od 6 milijuna žena. No, čudo se pretvorilo u noćnu moru. Izložena novorođenča tu odraslo je dobi razvila malformacije reproduktivnog sustava, kad kada čak i rak. Za liječnike je to bio strašan šok. Prvi su u put shvatili dugoročan utjecaj jedne kemijske molekule. Žrtve dietil stilbestrola su majke koje su ga primile i njihova djeca. Ako sintetski hormon poput dietil stilbestrola može uvelike promijeniti reproduktivni sustav djece, je li moguće da i druge molekule imaju sličan učinak? Je li, na primjer, moguće da su majke mladih danaca koji dolaze u bolnicu i ne znajući bile izložene vanjskoj opasnosti? Ako je okolina uzrok tomu, gdje se skriva ta tiha opasnost? Začudo proučavanje divljih životinja daju iste rezultate kao i ona danskih znanstvenika. Lug i let već 20 godina proučava aligatore u mnogobrojnim jezerima na Floridi. Prije nego što postane krvoločna i strašna životinja koja kraljuje u vodi, aligator je krhko biće, zaštićeno tankom ljušturom. Na samom početku Lugi let je, proučavajući jaja, opazio podmuklo zlo koje je izjedalo kraljevstvo aligatora. That we collected from what appeared to be clean, healthy lakes died. 50% of the eggs that we collected never produced a viable offspring. They were either infertile or the embryo had died early in embryonic development. We had no idea what caused this death. And one of the things that we also found were abnormalities of the reproductive system in hatchlings. And one of our concerns was this only a problem for newborn animals, or did this kako bi to doznali, treba je uhvatiti mladunča do odrasle životinje, i to noću kada su najaktivnije. Kod novorođenčadi i kod kojih postoje nepravilnosti, Lugi Let izmjerio je razinu testosterona, toga poznatog muškog hormona koji je prijeko potreban za pravilan razvoj mužjaka. Njegova je razina nevjerojatno niska. Može li se mužjak s tako niskom razinom testosterona normalno razvijati? Uz mnoge druge analize, gilet mjeri i penis mladih aligatora. Iznenađenje. Polovica aligatora jezera Apopke ima 25% manji penis u usporedbi s normalnom veličinom. 
from our perspective as scientists, low testosterone implied not just small penises, but many, many things, probably change in behavior, change in secretions of other organs all over the body. So for us, it's one data point. Of course, for the public, small penis size became probably the most famous finding that we have. And it's also become a bit of a joke because people can talk about alligators with little penises, but it's not a joke. It's a serious endpoint which implies to us that these animals are seeing a lifelong abnormality in their hormones. Je li to zbog promjena u prehrani, u temperaturi, zbog onečišćenosti? Jezero Apopka, jedno od jezera u kojima je Gile tuočio najviše takvih životinja, nekoliko godina prije onečistio je insekticidom. No ako je vjerovati analizama, voda je opet čista. Zašto su onda životinje u jezeru mnogo godina poslije još patile od toga? The moment that I realized we had something unique was I was sitting in a conference listening to Professor Howard Byrne give a talk about DES daughters, DES mice. And when he showed those slides of the ovary, I realized that the abnormalities that he had in the mouse that were similar to the abnormalities in the human female, the little girl that had been exposed to estrogens, were identical to the abnormalities I had in my alligators that had not been given a drug, that had not been given estrogen that I knew of, but had the exact same abnormality. And at that moment, I realized that we had this incredible similarity. I mean, it was the same pathology. And then the question was, is, well, where in the world were my alligators getting estrogen from? Gilet je pronašao ostatke pesticida u tijelima životinje. Jesu li ti pesticidi djelovali kao estrogen, ženski hormon? We actually know what kinds of chemicals are on the contaminated lakes, so we take clean eggs, eggs from our best lakes, and we treat them. And then we ask, okay, by applying these chemicals to these eggs, can we cause the abnormalities that we actually see on the contaminated lakes? We can show by giving these compounds that we can alter penis development. We can show that we've altered the development of the testis. Or if we give estrogens at very low levels to the females, we alter ovary development. I think for me, these observations, that you could expose a developing embryo to low levels of chemical, is the reason why I became so concerned. Ako određene kemikalije koje proizvodi čovjek mogu djelovati poput hormona, posljedice su velike. U prirodi nalazimo ostatke kontaminatora različitih vrsta. Mogu li oni utjecati na cijeli ekosustav? Tyron Hayes, svjetski stručnjak za vodozemce. Žabe žive u veoma raznolikom okolišu. U barama, potocima, rijekama u zaštićenim područjima te u područjima intenzivne poljoprivrede. Na zahtjev farmakokemijske grupe Syngenta, Hayes je na žabama testirao učinke njihova najprodavanijeg herbicida na svijetu, atrazina. U svojem laboratoriju na sveučilištu Berkeley u Kaliforniji, Hayes je punoglavce izložio vrlo malim količinama atrazina, jednakim onima kojih ima u okolišu. When we first did the experiment, uh, my laboratory technician would come to me and say, oh, we got this result. I said, I don't believe it. And then, you know, I cover up all the IDs on the slides and go, do it again. So he doesn't know which ones he's reviewed before. And he does it again. I go, oh, he can do the same thing again. Then I get another, maybe student, go, okay, analyze this and tell me what you get. And you get the same answer over and over again, then you start to believe it's real. Mužjaci izloženi atrazinu postali su hermafroditi. Njihovi testi se sadržavaju jajašca. New York Times je pisao o tom istraživanju koje je izazvalo velike kontroverze, jer su male količine što ih je rabio Hayes smatrane bezazlenima. Grupa Syngenta opovrgnula je i prestala financirati Hayesova istraživanja. 
Dok su drugi znanstvenici nastojali ponoviti eksperiment u laboratoriju, HS je nastavio svoje istraživanje na terenu. Broj vodozemaca u svijetu pada. Gotovo polovica bi mogla nestati, a nitko ne zna zašto. Tyron Hayes pronaći će indicije pregledavši stotine bara. Catch! 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 Meal! Posvuda skuplja žabe i uzima uzorke. Uspoređuje čista i onečišćena područja, pokušavajući ustanoviti poveznice između stupnja onečišćenja i abnormalnosti. To reproductive abnormalities. If you're exposed to a pesticide mixture that prevents metamorphosis and your pond dries up, directly you die because the pond dries up. But the reason that you didn't metamorphose and escape the pond was that you were exposed to pesticides that inhibited your metamorphosis. I, I believe we have very good data now that exposure to pesticides causes immune failure. Žabe, aligatori, ali i kornjače, ribe, ptice. Proučavatelji divljih životinja posvod otkrivaju manjkave spolne organe, smanjenu plodnost, poremećaj u ponašanju. Kod takvih životinja koncentracija hormona nije normalna, kao da su neke kemijske molekule zavarale endokrini sustav. When we think about endokrinology, um, and we think about how the system works, we talk about lock and key. The receptor is the lock and the hormone, um, the chemical is the key. And one of the things we're starting to realize is that we used to think that the key had to be exact. Like all of us carry around a key, we hope that nobody else has the key to our house or our car. But what we're starting to realize with endocrine disruption is that there may be hundreds of keys that can interact with this lock. And that's a little scary because sometimes they actually can make this lock do things which are abnormal. That is, the cells can be abnormal or can actually mimic um, kind of our normal key that is it actually can mimic a function in the body which we hoped wasn't happening. Je li pad broja mnogih životinskih vrsta donekle izazvan djelovanjem endokrinih disruptora? Sve više istraživanja upućuje na to. No u cijelom svijetu muškarci i žene izloženi su istim proizvodima. Although we might think so, humans aren't all that different from the other animals around us. Many of the genes that regulate our development, whether or not we grow an arm or a leg or an ear, are the same genes that are regulating those events in birds, in turtles, you name it. And in much the same way, the hormones that we produce, testosterone, estrogen, thyroid hormone, corticosterone, those same hormones are produced in fish and frogs. And so if you see effects in one type of wildlife, why wouldn't you expect that those same effects would occur in humans? The exposure might be different. We don't swim in the water like a fish, but we might drink that water. Otkako je potvrdila Skakebakovo istraživanje o smanjenju broja spermatozoida, Shana Swan istražuje moguće uzroke toga fenomena. Ona smatra da ako okolina igra neku ulogu, moraju postojati geografske razlike. Zato je izabrala četiri grada, dva megalopolisa, New York i Los Angeles, te dva grada u ruralnom području, Minneapolis i Kolumbiju. Usporediše kvalitetu sperme muškaraca koji žive u tim gradovima. I thought people in the country, I mean, the sort of idyllic, uh, pastoral, uh, you know, scene should be very safe and healthy. And then the big, dirty city stress and so on should make things bad. That was my prior hypothesis. But it was the reverse. 
Na kraju se pokazalo da muškarci koji žive u gradskim područjima imaju više spermatozoida i to pokretljivijih nego muškarci koji žive u Kolumbiji, u ruralnom području. More than half the land was farmland. In Minneapolis, almost none of the land around the center was farmland. So that was one big difference. And so we said, could it be something in the environment from these chemicals used on agriculture that could be responsible? We had collected urine from the men when they gave their semen sample. And so with the urine, we could look at pesticides. And what we found was that in Missouri, where the men who had worse semen quality had higher levels of agricultural pesticides compared to men who had good sperm quality. Tijekom godina ostaci pesticida bili su glavni predmet u istraživanjima endokrinih disruptora. No, jesu li samo oni odgovorni za to? Kako se u znanosti često događa, odgovor će doći slučajno. Ta slučajnost pokazat će da su endokrini disruptori zahvatili našu svakodnevicu, da postoje tamo gdje nitko nije niti pomišljao da bi mogli biti. Ana Soto i Carlos Zonenšajn biolozi su koji proučavaju kancerozne stanice. Kako bi ih umnožili, izlažu ih ženskim hormonima, estrogenima. No jednoga dana čak i kontrolne stanice koje nisu bile izložene tim hormonima počele su se umnožavati. It looked like all the cells were exposed to hormones, even the cells that we haven't exposed to estrogens voluntarily. We couldn't understand that, so we repeated the experiment and we obtained the same result. And so we started to suspect that something wrong was going on. Biće potrebni mjeseci istraživanja kako bi se pronašao ključ te zagonetke. Kontaminacija dolazila iz plastične pruvete. Plastika, taj materijal koji se smatra inertnim, sadržavao je sastojak koji je djelovao kao ženski hormoni, te je izazvao umnožavanje kanceroznih stanica. First of all, we were surprised. Second, immediately you think of the consequences of that. For example, well, if it's in the plastic, in my... Uh, labware it could be in baby bottles and then it means that if that was the case babies were exposed to hormones detergenti limenke plastika ambalaže soto i zonenshen testirali su sastojke iz 50-ak proizvoda koji se redovito upotrebljavaju u tim su proizvodima pronašli kemijske molekule hormonalnog učinka poput bisfenola a ili nonilfenola Doduše u malim količinama. Pre malim tvrde njihovi protivnici da bi izazvali ikakve posljedice. Jer u toksikologiji postoji zlatno pravilo. Količina čini otrov. To jest proizvod postaje toksičan samo u određenim količinama. S te strane, taj se proizvod smatra bezazlenim. Mnogi znanstvenici smatraju da to pravilo ne vrijedi za endokrine disruptore. U njihovu se slučaju ne radi toliko o količini, koliko o trenutku izloženosti i njezinu trajanju. Zato su Soto i Zonenšen odlučili napraviti pokus s bisfenolom A. Štakorice će tijekom trudnoće izložiti tom inertnom sastojku nađenom u plastici. Tijekom 15 dana cijevčica postavljena u leđa životinje ispušta kemijsku molekulu. Soto i Zonenšen žele doznati hoće li mladunci na taj način izloženi estrogenskoj molekuli imati kakve posljedice kada dođu na svijet, a onda i u odrasloj dobi. Rezultati premašuju njihova najcrnja predviđanja. These rats, when they reached uh, early adulthood, developed preneoplastic lesions. 100% of the rats developed preneoplastic lesions at all the doses we tested, even at low doses. 
And I ask the question, does breast cancer start in the womb? We are not proving that one thing is the cause and the other is the effect. But that reinforces the hypothesis that has to be tested. Are these xenoestrogens that have been introduced in the environment during the last 50 years the cause of this sudden increase in breast cancer incidence? Nitko ne razumije nagli porast broja slučajeva raka dojke. 1960. godine od njega je bolovala jedna žena od 20, a danas jedna žena od 8. Za tu vrstu raka koja je osobito osjetljiva na hormonalne promjene, teza o endokrinim disruptorima nudi mogući trak. Naime, mnogobrojne kemikalije hormonalnog učinka postoje u ljudskoj krvi, te napredak u njihovu otkrivanju danas omogućava mjerenje razine tih molekula. Među najsumnjivijima su ftalati. Oni služe kao omekšivači plastike i fiksatori u parfemima, a ima ih u kozmetici, pokućstvu, omotima prehrambenih proizvoda, PVC-u, igračkama, majicama. U današnjem modernom svijetu nemoguće je ne biti izložen ftalatima. Neki od njih imaju toksičan učinak kada se radi o reprodukciji. Richard Sharp to zna. On rabi ftalate u svojim istraživanjima o donošenju mužjaka na svijet. Trudne će štakorice izložiti ftalatima i promatrati i razvoj mladih muđaka. Ono što je ustanovio podsjeća ga na abnormalnosti kod mladih danaca koje je opisao Skakevak. Naime, štakori izloženi ftalatima u majčinoj utrobi dolaze na svijet s genitalnim malformacijama, a broj njihovih spermatozoida u odrasloj dobi je smanjen. Sharp je uspio kod živih životinja izazvati sindrom koji je kod ljudi proučavala skake bakova ekipa, poznati TDS. Our results produced the best verification of the TDS hypothesis because they say that you can create it in a normal animal if you have uh, exposure to environmental chemical and that you, when you do expose to this, you create a syndrome of disorders that is very similar to what we see in the humans. Ako velike količine ftalata izazivaju takve učinke kod štakora, što kod ljudi uzrokuju manje količine kojima su izloženi svaki dan? U Kopenhagenu je prije 10 godina provedeno istraživanje. Pratili su 2000 žena tijekom trudnoće te su im vadili krv kako bi utvrdili kontaminaciju ftalatima, ali i drugim poznatim endokrinim disruptorima, kao što su pesticidi ili usporivači plamena. Pomoću redovitih konzultacija, danski su liječnici pokušali ustanoviti vezu između izloženosti majke kemikalijama i razvoja dječaka. What was a surprise when I read uh, Richard Sharp's results was that what happened in rodents fitted with the clinical work I'm doing. That was a surprise to me, that it fitted so well. <laughs> If I look back at the history of my cohort study, I found more than I thought I would find. For one thing, I found all the chemicals in the breast milk that I looked for. And I found many associations between cryptorchidism and these chemicals or between hormone production and these chemicals. So I am not in doubt that the human body, the human testis is vulnerable to these chemicals. <laughs> We want to follow these children through puberty and see what happens in puberty um, when all the hormones have to get active again and hopefully we see them when they're big enough to uh, give a semen sample if it has also an effect on semen quality. That's the fear we have, that the effects we see now will actually last throughout your life, that they will have an effect also on adult function of these boys. S druge strane Atlantika i Shana Svon izmjerila je izloženost trudnica ftalatima, a zatim je pregledala i djecu. Došla je na originalnu ideju da na djeci primjeni način mjerenja uobičajen za glodavce, ali koje još nije izvedeno na ljudima. Anogenitalna udaljenost. Kod ljudi, kao i kod štakora, ta je udaljenost u prosjeku dva puta veća kod dječaka nego kod djevojčica. Njezino smanjenje moglo bi upučivati na feminizaciju. 
in rodents, this distance, this anogenital distance, is um, what they call a marker. Uh, they, it tells you that there has been something that has affected the testosterone, uh, fetal testosterone. And um, so because w these phthalates have been shown to affect fetal testosterone, we guessed, hypothesized that in humans that would also be the case and that the boys would have a shorter anogenital distance. And that is what we saw. We found a shorter anogenital distance and a smaller penile size in boys whose mothers had higher levels of some phthalates. To istraživanje provedeno na ograničenom broju majki još se uvijek osporava. Moraju ga provesti i drugi znanstvenici. Još jedno pitanje danas glasi: odakle ftalati u ljudskoj krvi? We have never measured on a biological matrix that can be breast milk or blood or urine where we could not measure thanate. We have never seen a person who was not exposed. So everybody are exposed to thanates. A, a major source of some of the thanates are from cosmetics. The, the lotions that every woman I know put on the skin every morning. No, kamo odlaze ftalati sadržani u određenim kozmetičkim proizvodima? Ostaju li u tijelu ili brzo nestaju? Kako bi odgovorila na ta pitanja, Skakebakova ekipa upravo je provela istraživanje jedinstveno u svijetu. Dvadeset i šest mladića mazali su kremom od glave do pete, svaki dan tijekom dva tjedna. Prvoga tjedna rabili su običnu kremu, a drugoga tjedna istu tu kremu s dva ftalata i parabenom, koji se često rabe. Nakon nanošenja znanstvenici su im izvadili krv kako bi izmjerili razinu hormona, te ostatke ftalata i parabena. You have to consider that if you don't want to eat it, you should not put it on your skin, because it will inside you. If you put some lotion on your skin, you can put, try and put some on the table at the same time, then it will stay on the table. It doesn't evaporate or anything. After 10 minutes you still have a drop there, but when you look at your skin, it's gone. Where did it go? It went into you, of course. Couldn't go anywhere else. So, so when you put a cream on with salates, those salates in, inside you, and it will give you a huge peak in your blood with salate because you put it on your whole body and it goes into you and it goes into the blood. Samo jedan sat nakon nanošenja u krvi nalazimo tragove ftalata. Istina je da ti metaboliti nestaju nakon 24 sata. No ako se krema rabi svaki dan, izloženost je stalna. Indicije postaju sve brojnije. I suprotno drugim zemljama koje čekaju jasna i definitivna jamstva, Danska je odlučila djelovati. 2006. godine pokrenula je kampanju za zaštitu trudnica. Kao mjeru sigurnosti, Ministarstvo za okoliš savjetovalo je svim budućim majkama da izbjegavaju određene proizvode, kao što su kozmetička sredstva boje za kosu, boja. Ukupno devet savjeta podijeljeno je svim rodilištima u zemlji. I think that there is more and more evidence uh, that uh, adult disease may have the origin in fetal life. It's not just testicular cancer, there are other types of diseases also. Uh, a metabolic syndrome is something that we have to learn that is extremely important that we take good care of our pregnant women. Znanstvenici su se složili. Od prvih trenutaka života okolina ulazi u igru i poigrava se osjetljivošću hormonalne ravnoteže. Upravo tijekom trudnoće mogla bi se pojaviti mnoga patološka stanja poput raka, bolesti imunološkog sustava, problema sa štitnjačom, diabetesa. Popis mogućih bolesti u međunarodnim publikacijama sve je dulji.
Već deseta godina sve više takvih istraživanja i određivanje novih sumnjivih tvari natjeralo je predstavnike kemijske industrije da reagiraju. Oni podupiru određene istraživanja, druga pak prestaju financirati te se informiraju o sasvim novim rezultatima. David Kadogan predstavnik je Evropske industrije Ftalata, a u Kopenhagenu će sudjelovati na simpoziju u organizaciji Skakebaka i njegove ekipe. Taj se simpozij održava svake dvije godine i vrlo je važno da se okupljaju svi koji proučavaju endokrine disruptore. Tijekom godina taj se krug proširio i pionirima su se pridružili novi ikonoklasti. Will breast cancer incidents be found to be increased in women exposed in utero to BPA 25 years from now? And what we should do in between? Right, so I'm going to be talking about an animal model and just to remind you really that the, the objectives of developing an animal model is to enable you to ask questions about human disorders that is impossible to ask in a clinical situation. Aren't you too anxious about what you've heard today about stellates? No, I'm not, because we're still talking about effects in rodents, and I believe when we have all the information that we will find these effects are not relevant to humans. It has been written by Jerry Heindel as a workshop for... Predstavnici industrije informiraju se o svim novim istraživanjima. Njihov je cilj predvidjeti buduće sukobe, kada se, na primjer, pojave problemi zabrane. Trenutačno treba zaustaviti istraživanja, poduprijeti sumnju, dobiti na vremenu. So I talked to the Sally toxicologist we know here and colleagues and said what do you measure? What do you see? What should we measure because we don't know how this dysmorphology would manifest itself in humans if it existed. And we put together this exam. So we measured the anagenital distance. For the first time, an effect has been observed on humans. Exactly. I, I am not worried because I do not believe the data. I believe there are some fundamental flaws in her experimental technique. This is not a surprise. This is what industry does to counter science that they don't like. It's their job. That's his job to criticize me and my job to do the best study I can. No, I haven't got a field no, sorry. No. I definitely feel I belong to a community. I even tell people this is my scientific family. We were actually attacked as, um, what did they call us? Endocrine disruptor crybabies or truth disruptors. We need to support each other because it's not a field that's uh, been accepted in the broader scientific community very easily. We are now growing in acceptance and it's uh, uh, becoming much easier. But for a long time we had to hold on to each other for support because we were under attack. Učinak endokrinih disruptora postao je pitanje javnog zdravstva. Između znanstvenih podataka i lobiranja industrije, rasprava se premišta na politički teren. To call the precautionary principle to the mind of colleagues. Please, I ask you as scientists to give us the tools we need to take effective action. Kako ponuditi najbolju zaštitu od kemijskih tvari? Evropski parlament donio je u prosincu 2006. godine novi propis o kemijskim proizvodima, direktivu RIČ. U 11 godina mora će biti registrirano 30.000 tvari, među kojima naravno i endokrini disruptori. Industrijalcima, a ne više državnim vlastima, nalaže se da dokažu neštetnost svojih proizvoda. S tom odredbom, jedinstvenom u svijetu, RIČ čini veliku prekretnicu što se tiče regulacije kemijskih proizvoda. Još moramo vidjeti kako će se primjenjivati. Intenzivnim lobiranjem, kemijska industrija odnijela je nekoliko pobjeda. 
Tako će moći dobiti dozvolu za korištenje opasnih kemijskih proizvoda ako dokaže da je svladala opasnosti. Svladavanje opasnosti, to je neuništivo načelo industrijalaca. Svim istraživanjima koje pokazuju hormonalni učinak određenih molekula, oni suprotstavljaju druga istraživanja i pokazuju mjernoću svojstvenu dobro moću obitelji. So what would you answer to people who are concerned? I would say, uh, I would say they can, or uh, you can be reasonably certain that the products that are currently on the market have been assessed under the question of endocrine disruption and are, can be used safely for you and for your children as well. 2005. godine Evropska unija ipak je zabranila šest ptalata u igračkama i proizvodima za djecu, koje znanstvenici smatraju otrovnima za reprodukciju. Tu odluku industrija je ocijenila više političkom nego znanstvenom. The parliament took a policy decision, very much on the precautionary side, which we accept. However, we still think this is much overdue and causes more concerns in the public than safety. Because, because if this is a way we assess substances in the future, any assessment under reach, which is scientifically sound based, can be politically overruled. And I don't think that it's a liable way to go forward if Europe wants to be an uh, innovative region in the world. Industrijalci se malo po malo bore, braneći svaku molekulu jednu za drugom. No je li danas doista o tome riječ? Jer sva su živa bića izložena ne samo jednoj molekuli, nego cijelom koktelu molekula. Koji je učinak toga koktela? U jednoj od najvećih evropskih jedinica za laboratorijske životinje, danska ekipa bacila se na golem posao. Izlaganje 1200 štakora mješavini male količine triju molekula, ftalata i dva pesticida. Davali su ih štakoricama tijekom trudnoće. Nakon toga, pregledavali su mladunce sve do odrasle dobi. Rezultati su sasvim u suprotnosti s matematičkim načelima. Our results illustrate that zero plus zero plus zero can give seven. And that means when you have three chemicals, you would say chemical number one, this is a zero effect level, no problem. The same for chemical number two, the same for chemical number three. What our results are showing is if you have a mixture of chemical one, two and three, you have clear effects. What was a really big surprise was that the Males actually didn't look at the high doses of the mixture. They didn't look like males. They had a very high frequency of malformations. And uh, on some endpoints, they actually looked a lot like females. We were so surprised that we hadn't expected to see it that bad. My main message would be that uh, Risk assessment without considering mixture effects underestimate the risk to humans. There is no legislation in place anywhere in the world that adds up the contribution from different compounds. It has all been made one compound at the time. And it has worked so far. I, I, there's no argument about that. But it is starting to break down because the number of compounds is so high now that we can no longer say you can look at them one at, at the time. It doesn't work. It is it's starting to break down. There will be some scandals coming. I don't know when it could be tomorrow, it could be in five years, but there will be examples where the combination of a thousand compounds at a very low dose exceeds what we can repair in ourselves. Od 
Ovo je priča o morskim puževima, a u ovom svijetu nevidljivih opasnosti nudi dozu optimizma. Ona dokazuje korisnost određenih uzbuna koje podižu znanstvenici i pokazuje da se još može nešto poduzeti. Početak priče prilično je klasičan. Prije 20 godina biolozi su se bojali da će puževi postupno nestati. Pronašli su ženke s penisima i otkrili da je to uzrok pada broja puževa. U tom velikom metežu seksualnih odstupanja kakav je priroda postala, biolozi to nazivaju imposeksom. Kako nastaje imposeks? Istraživanja su upučivala na krivca u kemijskom koktelu u kojem su se kupali puževi. Bio je to sastojak boja za brodove, TBT. Počela je borba za preživljavanje tih puževa, zagonetnih čuvara naših obala. Konačno, Evropska je unija 2003. godine zabranila TBT. Unmittelbar nach diesem Verbot mit einer Verzögerung von einem Jahr sehen wir jetzt an allen Untersuchungsstellen, die wir hier in Frankreich haben, einen dramatischen Rückgang der Belastung. An Standorten, wo früher keine Reproduktion, keine Fortpflanzung möglich war, treten jetzt plötzlich wieder Eikapseln auf. Das heißt, die Populationen verjüngen sich selbstständig. Und das ist eigentlich ein Zeichen der Hoffnung. Und es zeigt vor allem, wenn wir einmal den Mut aufbringen, zu reagieren und notfalls auch mal eine Substanz zu verbieten, wie schnell dann letztlich die positive Wende zu erreichen ist.